Life is serious. We've got jobs. We've got families. We've got responsibilities. We've got 401ks. Or even worse, maybe you don't have a 401k. <laughs> Life is serious. But that doesn't mean you have to take yourself seriously. The richest and fullest kind of life is one in which you take your work seriously and yourself lightly. There's a wonderful little book called All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. It's by Robert Fulham. And what I'm going to talk about tonight could be considered maybe a corollary to that book. Because all I really need to know, I learned through improv. You see, it turns out that the lessons of improv are also the lessons of life. Tonight, I'm going to talk to you about three of these lessons. And I'm going to give you some practical applications that you can take home with you and try them out in your life. The first lesson, play. Play is one of the fundamental tenets of improv. In fact, if you have ever seen a flyer for an improv class, instead of calling it a workshop, they'll probably call it a play shop. Mm -hmm. And any improviser, no matter how professional or seasoned, before they get on stage, they take time to warm up doing, guess what, play. Contrary to what my parents tried to drill into my head during my entire childhood, it's possible to infuse play into every area of your life and still get stuff done. In fact, you might even get more done. Skeptical? Okay. Let's consider a gentleman whose name is Dr. Stuart Brown. He's the former chief of psychiatry at Scripps Mercy Hospital right here in San Diego. He spent his entire career devoted to researching the effect of play on people's lives. And he found it to be so significant, he established a nonprofit which is called the Institute of Play which studies and researches these things. And what he found was that play is found in the accomplishments of successful people. Not only that, he discovered that there's a cumulative negative effect of play deprivation in people's lives. What Dr. Brown's research has shown is that play is an integral component to our learning, to our development of intelligence, and to our development in general. Things that we learn, like resilience, like innovativeness, like adaptability, all have their roots in play, particularly any kind of play that involves movement. Dr. Brown also discovered that play really enhances and enables a human being's curiosity and a human's sense of exploration. And those two things are essential for normal day-to-day -day activities, like simple problem solving. I'm going to give you each homework. And your homework is tomorrow on your way to work, when you're in your car, I'd like you to sing to yourself the ABCs. <laughs> Backwards. <laughs> with a French accent. <laughs> See where it takes you. Just play with it. The more you practice play, the more opportunities you'll have to learn about the second lesson of improv in life which is yes and. In improv, if I'm on stage and my scene partner hands me an object like this and says, oh, here's a basketball, I need 
to accept the reality that my partner has created there. I need to say yes, that that is a basketball. It doesn't matter if I had this brilliant idea for a great joke in my head when I thought that this was something else. I have to let that all go. Because if my partner hands this to me and says, oh, here's a basketball, Vera, and I say, oh, no, that's not a basketball. That's my mother-in-law's head. <laughs> my scene will take a nosedive. In life, yes and is about acceptance. We need to accept the realities that are true in our lives. Imagine how often all of us unwittingly deny other people's reality around us. Imagine if you have a friend that comes up and says, oh, I'm really scared about taking this test tomorrow. And you kind of flippantly say, oh, don't be scared, you're smart, you'll do really well. You've just denied that person's reality. And what happens is you stop the conversation right then and there. What is the person going to do with that? There's nowhere to go with that. However, instead, if you use the yes and technique, you might say something like, OK, you're scared. I get it. I'm willing to help you with that, because I think you're really smart. And I think you're capable of doing really well on this test. And when you take that approach, the opportunities open way up. There's all kinds of places you can go with that, in the conversation and in your life. One thing that will help you cultivate creating the and part of your yes and is the third lesson of improv, which is to explore and heighten. When improvisers are on stage, they don't have a script. They don't even have a rough storyline. They don't have any kind of set. They don't even have props. So the only way to have a scene that becomes interesting to the audience is to start to explore where that scene can go and to create explicit visuals in the eyes of the audience by heightening the reality, upping the stakes. I saw a performance by a two-person improv group called Mike and Chris. And at the beginning of the scene, they established that Mike's arm was actually a wing. So what did the two improvisers do next? They thought to themselves, hmm, well, if that's true, what else could be true? And they layered exploring and heightening on top of itself. And they decided at one point that Mike's leg was a cloven hoof and that Mike's other leg was a tentacle. And by the end of this scene, they had the audience howling. And everyone had a visual picture in their mind of what this wacky creature looked like. Exploring and heightening in our lives is seen in innovation. Groundbreaking, life-changing innovation, like the iPhone, for example. I can just imagine a bunch of engineers at Apple sitting there, and one guy says, oh, well, we have you know, this ATM machine, and, and it's capable of detecting when a finger presses a button. And then another engineer might say, oh, well, if the machine can do that, I wonder what else it could do. Could it follow my finger along that? Screen? Some other guy might say, ooh, could it follow two fingers? And then the most brilliant one would say, ooh, can I pinch the thing and open it up and zoom in on something? And thus, we have the innovation of the iPhone. Your homework for exploring and heightening is tonight when you get home, I'd like you to go and grab any kind of household object doesn't matter what it is. Maybe it's a ladle. I'd like you to then press record on your phone. Maybe it's an iPhone. <laughs> and I'd like you to give a little speech about how awesome and wonderful this object is. How many things you can do with it. Except, I don't want you to list things that you would typically list for this object. 
I don't want you to say it scoops up soup really well. I want you to explore unlikely things that this object could be good for. Oh yeah, the soup ladle's really great when I trim my beard because it doesn't make a mess all over my sink, you know, it catches everything. <laughs> oh, the soup ladle, it makes a great back scratcher. And I want you to keep going. Keep, let the recording keep going. And just think of one thing after another. And when you think that you've exhausted every possibility that your creativity can come up with, stop and watch yourself. And I guarantee you, while you're watching, you'll think of even more things. <laughs> Lastly, a great piece of homework that integrates all three of these lessons of improv, go see an improv show. <laughs> or better yet, take an improv class. And you can take advantage of integrating all of these lessons plus even more lessons of improv into your life. Play. Yes, and. Explore and heighten. Lessons of improv. Lessons of life. <laughs>